fui com o carro da elite. E disse, ora, tu fui lá mesmo, a mão me causava, foi essa. updates for the month of April. There have been a total of two positive cases and one quarantine reported. Teacher Appreciation Week, May 3rd through the 7th, 2021. Teachers change the lives of millions of children every day. And in a year where instruction could be virtual, in person, or a mix of both, their immense work and impact have provided a much needed sense of community and connection. Despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, educators across America are working, to, working hard to ensure every student has the tools they need to reach their full potential. The district would like to recognize all of its teachers for their commitment and dedication to students. National Principals Day was May 1st of 2021. Um, on May 1st, we were asking that you remember to take the time to thank the educational leaders of the school on School Principals Day. Throughout the year, these educators assume the commitment to lead our young people to a prosperous future. They support and guide quality teachers and staff, resulting in productive learning uh, environments for our children. Whether they lead in elementary, middle, or high school, a principal shows leadership skill while being approachable. Many students see their principals as role models. The district would also like to recognize its principals for their commitment and dedication to the students. End of year exams. Students are finishing state assessments at all schools. To date, assessments have been administered in ELA, Math, Science, Algebra 1, English 2, U.S. History, uh, bi and Biology 1. Eight grade science assessments and makeup assessments are the only remaining assessments which students must take. Students who may have mistaken an assessment have until the end of the end of the school year to do so. Federal programs. The Mississippi Department of Education conducted a virtual monitoring visit of the federal programs on Wednesday and Thursday of last week. The programs which were monitored included Title I Part A, Title I Part D, Subpart A, JDC, and Equitable Services Private Schools. District and school level administrators participating in interviews and fixed assets checks were conducted at selected schools and at the central office. The monitors will complete their reports and the district can expect to receive an official report of the visit within the next 30 to 45 days. The district hosted its virtual superintendent social on April 29th and 30th. To date, the district has recognized 206 certified staff, 208 classified staff, 619 parents, and 619 students. 
The GSTSD will conduct its graduation ceremonies on Thursday, May 20th of 2021 at Rice Titan Stadium on the campus of Mississippi Valley State University. The ceremonies will take place um, at the following times. LaFleur County High School, 8.30 a.m. Amanda Elson High School, 11.30 a.m. and Greenwood High School at 2.30 p.m. The, numbers of, the number of seniors projected to graduate on May 20th at each high school are 94 at Amanda Elsie, 147 for Greenwood High, and 48 at LaFleur County High School. On Friday, April 30th, 2021, Mississippi Valley State University hosted a celebration planned especially for the district's high school seniors. MVSU's president, Dr. Gerald Briggs, along with members of his staff and MVSU students, provided our students with very encouraging messages about the importance of graduation and the college experience. This event was also filled with fun moments for students as they were entertained by MVSU's choir, marching band, cheerleaders, and fraternities and sororities. MVSU announced that all Greenwood LaFleur Consolidated School District seniors who register and attend the university will receive a $250 book scholarship and look forward to an additional award in the fall. We would like to thank, again, thank Mississippi Valley State University for hosting such a great event and we look forward to more opportunities to expand the partnership. The number of seniors who have been accepted to college per school, Amanda Elsie High School, 24, Greenwood High School, 82, LaFleur County High School, 40. The number of seniors planning to go to the military or armed forces, Amanda Elsie High School, 2, Greenwood High School, 5, and LaFleur County High School, 3. Athletic recognitions. The Greenwood High School Athletic Championship Ring Ceremony will be held on May 17th at 6 o'clock p.m. in Greenwood High School's gymnasium. The Spring Athletic Presentation will be held on May 18th in each high school's gymnasium at the following times. LaFleur County High School at 1 o'clock p.m., Amanda Elsie High School at 2 o'clock p.m., and Greenwood High School at 3 o'clock p.m. All elementary and middle schools have scheduled transition ceremonies for students in grades pre-K, kindergarten, first, fifth, sixth, and eighth grades. These events will highlight and celebrate student achievement for the year. The district is planning a retirement ceremony for uh, teachers, uh, retirees, on May 14, 2021 at 1.30 p.m. More details are forthcoming. The last day for seniors is May 17th of 2021. The last day for all students is May 26th. And the last day for teachers is May 27th. This concludes the superintendent's report. Chair, sure, I want to obtain a motion to receive the superintendent's report. <laughs> It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. At this time, we would like to recognize all of the students, parents, teachers, and staff of the month for April. Do we have anybody here for Thread Gill Primary School? Are there any teachers, parents, students, or staff for Thread Gill Primary School? Thread Gill Elementary School. Claudine Brown Elementary School. Davis Elementary School. LaFleur County Elementary School. LaFleur County Junior High School. Elsie Junior High School. Greenwood Middle School. LaFleur County High School, Amanda Elsie High School, Greenwood High School, and CTC. Congratulations for the month of April. A job well done. Let's give them a hand. Here.
Thank you all for logging on, and you have a wonderful night. At this time, board members, we know that we're celebrating Teacher Appreciation Week. And if we have any of our teachers listening live on Facebook, we just want to say, go teachers. We have the best teachers on this side of heaven. Thank you for your job and another job well done. Let's give them a hand, board members. Also, speaking of an honor, we would like to thank Dr. Brown for her leadership skills. She's built a partnership with Mississippi Valley State University, and our kids were represented well on Friday, and that I know of that I've never seen this. So Dr. Brown, we thank you for your leadership skills, a job well done. I just wish I could have seen it with my own eyes. Let's give her a round of applause for her leadership skills. Dr. Brown. Next we have the uh, monthly reports from our chiefs. At this time, Daryl Gary. Is Mr. Gary available? Yes. You okay. hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Board members, do you have any questions for Dale Gary? Yes. Dr. Mario Miller. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the board. I'm here. Okay. Any questions for Dr. Miller? Dr. Miller. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. How are you? Good. Um, could you just explain what the paperless onboarding system is? Okay, our district is currently using, we're, we're, we're old school. We're, we're pushing a lot of papers for onboarding for, the, for, for, uh, for, for anything with the district. It, it includes insurance, it includes uh, 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 all kinds of benefits, it includes their, their, uh, their initial paperwork that we have to use to, to get uh, their file started. So what is essentially <coughs> going to happen with a paperless onboarding system is there's not going to be a personnel file as we know it, where we have uh, years and years of old employees uh, filed and paperwork in a file drawer. Um, it's all going to be in a computerized system. Uh, we can just simply enter an employee's number in our system, and everything pops up. Um, everything that you can imagine in a personnel file would be there in a paperless system. So that's essentially what we're going to go to, and we are ecstatic about it because as we as as we speak right now, we we don't have any, any room. We, we actually run out of room in our office, and um, because of old files. So we're just going to that system because it would be a lot more efficient. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions for Dr. Miller? <clears throat> Coach Gatewood. Good evening, good evening. Good evening, Coach. Any questions for Coach Gatewood? Miss Andrea Parker. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Miss Yolanda Greer.
Is this three available? You guys, I was saying, how is everyone this evening? Um, I was having trouble with the computer, so I'm on my phone, but I'm here if you need me. Any questions from the rear board member? M1 Brown? Are you here, Mr. Brown? Mr. Clay Ward. Mr. Ward. JDC. Shannon Storm. Good afternoon, I'm here. Uh, good evening, Mr. Storms, how are you? Very good, sir. Um, just one question. Um, can you give me an estimate as it pertains to the turnaround time um, with getting phone books repaired and returned to the students from the date or day in which your office is notified? Uh, sure. What we have been trying to do is get the notifications coming to us faster from the school level. Uh, that's been a, a bit of an issue, but we, we're working that out, trying to get a little faster response of when the parent has dropped them off. Uh, at that point, we'd go out to the school and pick them up. We usually run a couple of uh, pickups during the week. And then at that point, when they get back to our office, we uh, have to go through the paperwork, do the claim process, and by the time they're sent off, usually within 24 to 48 hours, they're sent off for repair. And it's usually been about a seven to 10 day lead time before the company ships them back to us. We have to go check the warehouse to see what has arrived because we have no idea. We're getting packages every day. So it's really on us to go check everything from school level all the way to warehouse level to pick them up to then sort through them when we get them back and then issue out to school. So process hasn't changed. It's, it's a bit of a lengthy one, but uh, we really don't know depending on the damage of the machine itself to give you an accurate time to say this one will be returned within seven to 10 days. But if it's a normal damage, screen crack, that sort of thing, we have been having them back to the school where we picked them up within a 14 day period. And that's just truly estimating what the damage is. Thank you, Mr. Storm. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Storm. Good evening, Mr. Storm. Yes, ma'am. There is, and it's exactly the same, to be honest. Uh, we pick those up usually the same time we pick up the Chromebooks. Uh, most of the time, a hotspot is a little less um, hard to work with. Uh, they either work or they don't. Uh, we have been able to program hotspots at the school level and not have to bring them back to our office. So some of them are mostly damaged, cable problems, charging problems. We've received some with no SIM cards and batteries returned to us. So. Um, you know, just trying to get a replacement for them. So there's all sorts of things that we run into, um, but it is the same process. We do a claim process. Uh, we do not have a place that we can send off hotspots for repair. So we have been going through our extras and stock that we have, replacing them on an as-needed basis to get them back in their back in their hands for operation. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, Mr. Ward is available. Can you say that again? Mr. Ward for the JDC, he's online and available. Mr. Ward? Hey, how you all doing? Mm -hmm. Doing good. <laughs> Board member B, I have any questions for Mr. Ward. Thank you, Mr. Ward, no questions. It's Chandra Gary. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I have a question for you about this Growing Healthy program funded by the University of Mississippi. 
Can you elaborate on uh, the healthy eating part? Like, how is it going to be incorporated? Okay, so the, the program is, it was a pilot program in the Sunflower County um, Early Learning Collaborative, and they invited us to come and view the program. What they do is they encourage the students to eat healthy foods. They provide the um, machine that you grow the lettuce and the herbs in. They teach the students how to grow their own um, vegetables. They also teach them yoga. And these, um, the strategies that they're used, they're aligned to the standards uh, for the pre-K, the performance standards for the pre-K classrooms. And so we're very fortunate enough, um, I did receive an email on today that they did receive funding. And if uh, the district is wanting that opportunity, they would love to come into our district and provide that to our students. So it's just teaching the students um, in the Mississippi Delta about healthy eating and having a healthy body and mind. And so that's how they would incorporate it. They also collaborate with the uh, area businesses, uh, the restaurants, and they come in. For instance, for an example, one of the local restaurants in Indianola came in and showcased how the, how the students, they cooked black and catfish which we know in Greenwood, we are considered the catfish capital of the world. So it's just to enhance the students' learning in the pre-K setting and allow them an opportunity to come in contact with uh, entrees and dishes that they wouldn't normally do in their households. So I guess I'm not understanding. I'm saying, so they're gonna actually, actually eat in the classroom or they're gonna actually prepare food? Yes, and I, and the, the benefit of the program is that they provide all the ingredients for the program. So when the day that I visited the school in Sunflower County, they were bringing yogurt and the granola and the fruits for the students to create their own parfaits. So they, the, the grant, well, the program provides the ingredients for whatever they're asking them to do in the class rooms. Thank you. Any other questions for me? Nikisha Collins. Good evening. Shot of Roby Parnell. She was having some technology issues. Thank you. You're welcome. To Lee Hudson. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, Ms. Hudson. <coughs> good evening. How are you? Uh, Ms. Hudson, um, thank you for including the information uh, regarding, um, I'm going to say your recommendation, uh, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, um, regarding the rezoning of routes. Is that a recommendation? Yes, sir. Uh, we're going um, to continue to run a mock uh, route of that rezone. So uh, Mr. Johnson and I are going to uh, sit down and try to finalize it, and that's why I did include pending um, his approval. All right, so um, this is one thing that Ms. Abraham spoke on um, a few meetings ago, and I totally support um, pending, you know, that we speak with the parents and the children to get, you know, their input on the suggested changes. But could you just speak to how these changes could potentially benefit um, the students in your area uh, being transportation? Um, okay, I would, I would just say that as it relates to transportation, if we cut down on the hours that we um, spend going to pick the students up, it, um, from the mock route, it may um, decrease the time, the uh, early pickup time for some of the students that wait out um, on those routes. 
Now, I'm not for sure because I, that's all pending registration, how many kids we get in those areas. But it will reduce the time based on the numbers that we have from uh, 2019 and 2020. Thank you, Ms. Hudson. And, and some of these other acts that we do consider acting on this before the new school year begins based upon the feedback from Ms. Hudson, uh, Dr. Brown, and Mr. Brown. Ms. Hudson, I would like to ask you a question about your breakfast and lunch delivery. How long does your department handle the food for breakfast and lunch? What's, what's your turnaround time or what's the time that the food is on the bus? Okay, um, that's going to vary from each route, but for the most part, um, you know, the rural routes, it is longer, and I would say about an hour, um, and a, maybe an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half that the food is on the bus going, uh, you know, before it's delivered to the um, rural areas. Now, in town route, um, those routes can go anywhere from an hour to um two and a half hours, three hours, depending on the uh, number of stops they have. I'm not saying that the food is on the bus that long, but um, that's, our, that's the time that our drivers are out. So just say for instance, if the driver gets to the bus, uh, get to the cafeteria at nine, I'm using this as an example. If the driver gets to the bus at nine, I mean gets to the cafeteria at nine, um, sometimes they may load up at nine, nine, 15, nine, 30, they're loaded up and they're gone. So that's, it just depends on basically what time they need the cafeteria. Any other questions for me, Cousin? Madam Chair, I just wanted also to um, tell Mr. Johnson and Ms. Hudson how much I appreciate your looking at the situation and taking action. Yes, ma'am. Um, we will. We will have the, um, that information finalized soon. We're just trying to make sure that we um, have all the addresses on file and just uh, looking at the numbers based on 2019 and 2020. Uh, Jackie Howard. Good evening to everyone. Ms. Howard, could you please tell me how the breakfast and lunches are packaged each day? How they are packed each day? Yes, ma'am. So when you send out food, so like if you put in certain items or you just send them in food trays. Okay. Each day, the um, breakfast and lunch meals, they are packed in carryout trays. Most of the managers use their, they, some of the managers use their own discretion as to how they're going to pack their meals. But I do purchase carryout trays so that the meals can be placed in carryout trays. Um, there is a situation where for breakfast, the principal prefer her breakfast to be placed in brown bags. So it varies depending on if it's pre-packed items, they can, pack, they can pack it in brown bags. If it's something like hamburgers, a French, some French fries, uh, diced peaches, a roll, they can put that in a carryout, but the diced peaches, they will place the diced peaches in a four ounce cup with the lid. And, okay, let's start this way. A carryout tray. They'll put the hamburger, wrap the hamburger in a four wrap. They'll place that in the carryout. The french fries should go in a french fry bag. That's like a little paper paper tray, just like you get at McDonald's or Wendy's. They'll place that in the carryout tray. The roll, they'll place the roll in the carryout tray. Okay, those are, those are the items that they will place in the carryout tray. Now, the rest of the lunch items will go in what we call an ice bag. They will place the milk in an ice bag, and they will place the uh, assorted fruit juice because those are wet items they will place those in the ice bags so really the managers use their discretion as to how they want to place those items on a daily basis 
but we do purchase carry-out trays to place the items in. We purchase uh, ice bags to put the wet food items like your frozen fruit juices, your frozen fruit cups, and your milk. And we also purchase brown bags where you can put pre-packed dry items in. That's like um, a Pop-Tart, uh, cereal. Those are your dry items that will go in brown paper bags. Okay, so what I'm trying to establish is, so when they go on a bus, uh -huh. it, it just depends on what that manager says is how it's packaged to go on a bus to go uh, be dispersed to the students in the neighborhood. Well, what I'm saying is, I have it, they have carryout trays available. They have carryout trays available. They have ice bags available, and they have brown bags available. Now, one manager may decide to put their diced peaches in a four ounce cup with the lid. Another manager may decide to put that those diced peaches in the carryout tray. But what we found to happen is that if they put the diced peaches in the carryout tray, by the time the bus moves and turns and hit bumps, the peaches will end up, the peach juice will end up spilling out of the carryout tray. So that's a lot of reason why they don't put the diced pears or peaches in a carryout tray. They put it in a four ounce cup with the lid. Okay, last question, Ms. Powell. Who, uh -huh. Who's responsible for checking expiration dates on food? Who's responsible for mm -hmm. checking expiration dates yes, on food? Yeah, in each cafeteria, yes ma'am. That is the manager's responsibility and also I'm supposed to or I, I should also go in their inventory and be checking dates as well. I should be monitoring as well. But managers know that we're not supposed to hold inventory no longer than one year on hand. After that, we're supposed to do a discard sheet saying that that item was discarded. They have one year, and it's really the manager's responsibility, but I'm also supposed to monitor that. Yes, ma'am, so how often do you monitor? I monitor very often. Okay, thank you, Ms. Howard. You're welcome. Uh, good evening, Ms. Howard. Uh, just evening. for clarification, uh, once your items are package in either your carry-out tray or your brown bag, how are they packaged to be placed on the bus? In a cooler, uh, hot bag, for lack of a better term? We have, we purchased, we purchased, um, you all will probably call them pizza bags, but we purchased uh, food, ca food carriers or food totes to put those items in. Now, for some reason, and they have more than enough because at one point they were talking about they didn't have enough. So we purchased food totes for those items to be placed in food totes. Now you may walk up and some manager may end up putting those items in a box, but they have all the equipment that they're supposed to have to place that food in either a food tote it's going to either be red, black, gray, or blue. Or they also have what we just purchased. We call those Mighty Lights. It's a food container. Those are either going to be royal blue, red and black, or gray. So they're supposed to place those items in either or, those either one of those um, containers. That pizza bag or that Mighty Light. Thank it you, really should not be placed in boxes. But now I, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. You may walk up one day and they will place it in boxes because they're saying that they can get more items in a box. Ms. Howard. Yes, ma'am. So in those bags, do those bags um, help to keep the food at the proper temperature? Yes, ma'am. That yes, ma'am. That's why they're called insulated food totes and insulated food carriers. 
And they also have those, um, what do you call them? Uh, those big coolers. That's what they put their milk in. You may find some putting their milk in and their juices in. And it's iced down. So that's for the coal items. But those insulated food carriers and that insulated food tote, it is supposed to maintain temperature because they're only on that bus about an hour and a half, depending on what route and how fast that food is being served. So we really don't need to be using those boxes. We do not, okay. no, because we have all the proper equipment to um, deliver those meals. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Howard. You're welcome. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I have some concern when it says the meal delivery via bus route will not be available in the month of June and July 2021 due to the shortage of drivers. And I know that probably has anything to do with either. Uh, I was wondering if Mr. Johnson and Ms. Hudson could maybe look into some alternate uh, alternatives to that? Yes. We will have them available at the school cafeterias. All school cafeterias will be open for the month of June. We will not be running some of the in the month of July. But in the month of June, it will be open and available for parent pickup as well as students to come to the cafeterias for the month of June. But if you had numbers of bus drivers, sufficient drivers, you could deliver to the to the where they have been delivered, right? Yes, at this time, uh, because we, we have been running for almost a year now, we don't have drivers that are, that are able to. Some are, are taking vacation this June, therefore we won't have enough drivers to effectively deliver throughout our communities. Thank you. Is there a shortage, uh, Mr. Johnson, during the year? A shortage of bus drivers during the year? I know it's this year. Yes, we were down when, when we was actually fully in effect, and Ms. Hudson has that number that right now we're currently short. Ms. Hudson, you can weigh in on the exact number of drivers as we look at for routes next year. Okay, at this time, we're currently short 10 drivers. Um, at this time, we are running um, ads, and uh, Dr. Miller has partnered with us to uh, help you know, get our flyers um, soliciting drivers. We are asking our uh, new teachers to, you know, come forward. We are having class this summer. And just for the record, Mr. Anderson and myself, along with Morris Bush, we will uh, host uh, various classes uh, starting um, next week. And they will be in the afternoon to help people who are interested in getting their uh, CDL license. So we will uh, extend our that invitation to anyone that's open, but we are short of drivers um, due to retirement, due to um, teachers leaving the district as well as uh, other things. So we are short at this time, but for the record, we are down 10 drivers at this point. Thank you. Dr. Fletcher Hardy. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Dr. Hardy. Under student achievement, could you elaborate where you say feedback is consistently given to the faculty and or staff members? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Uh, anytime observations occur um, uh, during that observation, if we, if I or we say anything we need some reference, uh, it, the feedback can be positive. Uh, the feedback, it can be negative, but it's all constructive. If we see something that a teacher or staff member should implement something they could have uh, expanded on uh, a teachable moment uh, that they missed or they address or if they're doing something just very exceptional then that feedback is given uh, to that faculty or staff member whoever is conducting or teaching that class at that time. Mr. Hodges? Yes ma'am. What instrument do you utilize uh, for uh, formal observation? Well, we utilize the, the district has a has an instrument that we use for observation for form, for day to day observations. For formal observations, there's an instrument that came from Mississippi Department of Education. Okay. 
they were used in the form that I was placed. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions, board members? Clarissa May. Hello, everyone. I have a question under your assessment results number four, and you have noted that there is no documentation for every school except for Greenwood Middle School. for any school except for Greenwood Middle School. So what, what I was stating there is that there are no, uh, no discipline infractions that were reported. So the only school that had anything reported as far as discipline was concerned for that month, as far as any students receiving any suspensions or uh, infractions, I guess I should say, was at the Greenwood Middle School. They had one student to populate. So for the most part, they're saying that there were no infractions at any other school. Any other questions, board members? Good evening, Miss May. Good afternoon. I mean, good evening. How are you doing? I'm well. I have a quick question. Have you um, ever discussed to the board about the isolate grant? Have we heard about that one? Yes, ma'am. I actually um, spoke on it at the last meeting. Okay. But the did you want me to get I'm a refresh me? Say that again. I'm listening. Okay. So with the isolate grant, it's, it's an opportunity for us to receive uh, NCL curriculum, which is our social emotional curriculum, uh, to, to provide interventions for those students who are displaying some uh, behavior deficits. And so with that grant, each one of the schools that was selected receives a budget of $2,500 to purchase their curriculum. And we've already actually begun the process uh, of selecting what curriculums we want to use at each individual school. Now with the grant, they did have a, um, they did not allow us to like just pick one specific uh, curriculum to address all of the schools that were selected. So each school had to pull the, the curriculum that works best for their their environment. We um, are currently waiting for approval of the curriculums that we put out there. We had to give them three selections, and we are waiting on them to approve which one we'll, we will be uh, rewarded. Uh, we are going to the training, because you can't just select the curriculum. We do have to go through a process of training. And we are in the process now of doing those. We have three people at each school uh, who are completing those. And the schools that received it are Bankton Elementary, Greenwood Middle School, Threadgill Elementary, Threadgill Primary, Davis Elementary, Greenwood High School, and Davis. I think I said Davis, Davis Elementary. Thank you. You're welcome. Lashada Roby Parnell, SIG officer. Ms. Perkinson admits that she's still having trouble getting on. She lives in a rural area. And she's been trying the duration of the meeting. Sabrina Tannamore. Good evening.
Mitch Milton also, Mr. Brown is on, he's on by phone, but he had problems with his microphone. But he wanted to hold it and he was on in case y'all had questions. Can you um, give an update on teachers teaching out of area? Uh, basically, I just gave that, I've uh, been working on that. I sent a report to uh, Dr. Pulley on today, and basically what I sent to him uh, for the uh, secondary schools, there's one teacher um, out of area at Amanda L. as, as of this year uh, in order to plan for the next year. Uh, there is one teacher out of area, area at LZ High School. There are eight out of area at Greenwood High School, one out of area at the Florida County High School. There are three out of area at Amanda LZ Junior High, and there are two out of area at Greenwood Middle School. Ms. Hart. Yes. Do we know if there are in road or in route to, on route rather, to uh, licensure? Okay, so, now they have, um, there are only two of those that, no, not two, one, two. There, there are two that have no license, no, two or three. The others have a valid license they are just teaching out of area. Okay. But of, of, of that number, only, um, let's see, there's, there, there's only two or three that have no license at this time. I want to say there are two, but the others have valid licenses. They're just out teaching out of area based on their life. So I was look, listening to Amanda Elsie High School. Was that the largest number that I heard? No, Greenwood High had the largest number at eight. LaFleur and Elsie only have one each. Repeat that before LaFleur and Amanda Elsie. They only had one each. Okay. Is that the high school for Elsie or a junior high? Uh, that's for the high school. The junior high had three. Okay. Any other questions, board members? Are we working to support those that um, that to support those at Greenwood High School? Is that Mr. Clark? To support him to get him get those uh, prospects fully licensed. We are uh, uh, working with we, Ms. Cole and I uh, met with principal uh, on uh, last week or, or on last week to address uh, staffing concerns. And, and, and we know that this year uh, was a year that uh, uh, we uh, dealt with the pandemic and, and, and distance learning. And what we want to make sure is that before we uh, uh, go out and bring so many people in, we may, uh, for the most part, have the individuals in our district. We just need to uh, place them, you know, in the various areas that uh, that that we can. Um, even though it may say out of area, uh, students, because you all know the way we were able to operate this year, 
uh, students were still able to receive the uh, instruction from the, for example, if I was at one high school, I was still able, I'm still able to receive the instruction from a teacher at another one because of the situation we were in. But since the situation will likely change, then we know that each place is going to have to have a, a physical person there. Thank you. And, and to also answer, um, um, at that at Greenland High School, we know which particular area it is, and, and we've been um, in contact with uh, the university uh, to, to attract those, those teachers. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions, board members? Cynthia House. Good evening, everyone. Hey, Ms. Howard. Uh, I would like to know uh, those persons on the district level and school level that would be planning to prepare for the 22 application for SF3. Those will be uh, the district leadership team. Uh, those are the only ones at the district level. So there's the superintendent and the three assistants, is that what you're saying? Yes, they report for the people, I mean, as far as the people that work in their department, so they bring their ideas of, to the table when it's time to plan for the federal program's application. And I will meet with the principals individually. So it's just the district level and then each principal? Yes. Principals will be budgeting for their individual schools, and at the district level, we'll be planning for any district initiative that we budget uh, at the district level for all the schools. Is there any way that ESSA 3 has to be spent? Well, we haven't gotten guidance on it yet. Uh, we do know the amount, but we haven't received training, or, and it is forthcoming. Can you give me the amount? So right at 40 million. Any other questions, board members? Any questions for Ms. Daniel? I don't see a sheet for Ms. Hurt, but I know she's supposed to be here. Are you here, Ms. Hurt? I am. Does anybody have a report on the paper? Um, you don't have to read the whole thing, just give us a few highlights, that's all. 
Okay, so as of now, we're working to um, secure textbooks, orders. We're going to meet with departments and talk to teachers, and we're going to review samples and decide which books we're going to order. We're also in the process of revising pacing guides and making any edits that teachers seem uh, teachers want, and we're discussing the instructional delivery model, which one we're going to keep and utilize for instruction in the classroom. Thank you, Ms. Hurd. We also did get yeah. paperwork for Ms. Cation. Do you have any uh, updates for your department? Good evening. The only thing I submitted, I did submit that, it was the uh, testing counts for each school. I submitted that information mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, I submitted information about, uh, I'm in the process of updating the, uh, the district's test security plan for I mean, the district's uh, professional development plan for the upcoming year. Okay, we do have an indication. I'm sorry. That's okay. Any questions, board members? So, all the communication of the numbers that are in parentheses, are those numbers of students who did not test or? Those numbers in parentheses are the ones who are not complete. It could be a combination of those who uh, have started session one. If we're looking at ELA and math, if we went to see some of those students have started session one but have not completed session two, and it also uh, includes some students who have not completed either of the sessions. So those are the ones who, uh, I mean, do not have completed tests. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Cation. Uh, under your professional development, uh, I don't know if this is tentative, uh, but I see the ACT certified educator training. Is that, uh, I know normally those trainers go to a training out of state, correct? Normally they do, but these will be virtual. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, last is Mr. Brown, are you on? Mr. M1 Brown. Ms. Hurt, thank you for turning your paperwork in. We just didn't get it, or I apologize for calling your name. We would like to thank the Chief for indulging us on today. We hope you have a, rest, a good rest of the day. Good night. Dr. Brown. Next, we have the School at Risk Report for East Elementary and the additional targeted support and interventions report uh, for the Floor County Elementary, Dr. Quinn. Good evening, Ms. Uh, for both schools, our school leadership teams meet regularly to discuss data, research based strategies, action plans, and next steps towards the school improvement. Principals at both schools work with district level administrators to build capacity in content specific instructional knowledge, along with strengthening their ability to identify key components to effective teaching practices. Students at both schools are being administered state assessments. Uh, data will be used from these assessments to set student uh, academic targets for next year and to create a plan of action to address learning loss in each of the subject areas. Next, we will uh, continue with the regular agenda, uh, 16 section land report, Mr. Mike Ainsworth.
chair will entertain a motion to file a termination notice to the reparation on lease contract held by John Max Edward, 1621-1. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Chair will entertain a motion to file a termination notice to the hunting and fishing lease contract held by Tanglewood Wildlife Incorporated, 1671. Second. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Chair will entertain a motion to advertise for a hunting and fishing lease, Tanglewood Wildlife Incorporated, 1617-1 with the Commonwealth. Okay. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Chair will entertain a motion to file a termination notice to the hunting and fishing lease contract held by the Florida County Hunting and Fishing Association, 1622-2. It's been motioned and second twice. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Chair will entertain a motion to advertise in the Commonwealth for a hunting and fishing lease, Tanglewood Wildlife Incorporated, 1622-2. It's been motioned and second twice. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Chair will entertain a motion to approve of a 16-section land lease agreement between Brad Tepper and Tammy Tepper to Orange Foot Hunt Camp LLC 1621-1, Lot 4. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Chair will entertain a motion to approve of a release instrument for Donna Moore on 1621-1, lot 34. Question, Madam, Madam President. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Angel, what is a release instrument? A release instrument is where someone is surrendering their contract back to the school district. Thank you. Chair okay. one, okay. Second. Motion is second, all in favor? All right. Any opposed? I have a motion to carry. Chair will entertain a motion to approve of a recreational contract to Money Mississippi Rod and Gun Club Incorporated, 1621-1E, Lot 65, at fair market rent of $250 per year. No move. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I have a motion to carry. Chair will entertain a motion to approve of a recreational contract to Lee Smith, 1621 1, lot 34, at a fair market rent of $300 per year. Question, Mr. President. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Angler, how many acres are um, is that people like? I would actually have to look on the tax plot map to say that, but I could, I could find that out for you. Uh, most of those lots are pretty small lots. <laughs> Chair will entertain a motion. I need move. Yeah. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Mr. Angler.
and that motion will read again. Did you have a chance to check with the courthouse to see what the value is of the property based on the tax rolls? If the building's, I can give you the land value. Okay. The building's extremely difficult, and, and I will have that information to you before you entertain the bids. Okay. Chair, I want to entertain a motion to advertise in the Commonwealth surplus owned by the Greenville Fourth Consolidated School District T.Y. Fleming site. So moved. Is there a motion and second? All in favor? Any opposed? Nay. Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Let the record show one nay. Dr. Roshan Rayleigh. Is that it for you? That's all we have. Any questions about anything we have tonight? No questions. Thank you, okay. Mr. Ainsworth. Thank you for your time. Dr. Brown. Next, we have the approval of the 2021-2022 teacher salary scale. Attached is the 2021-2022 teacher salary scale for the Greenwood and Florida Consolidated School District. Mrs. Washington is available if you have questions. That's right. The superintendent recommends that the school board approve the 2021-2022 teacher salary scale for the Greenwood and Florida Consolidated School District. Chair, I want to take a motion to approve the 2021-2022 teacher salary scale for GLCSD. Second. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Dr. Brown. The 2021-2022 revised classified salary scale. Attached is the district's 2021-2022 classified salary scale. Superintendent recommends school board approval of the revised 2021-2022 classified salary scale. Chair, want to take a motion to approve the revised 2021-2022 classified staff salary scale. Second. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I have had the motion to carry, Dr. Brown. Approval of summer feeding program and budget, Mr. Jones. The Greenwood LaFleur Consolidated School District is requesting the approval of the operation of the summer feeding program, which will operate June the 3rd through June the 30th, 2021. All sites will be operational Monday through Thursday. The superintendent recommends that the school board approve the operation of the summer feeding program and the proposed budget. Madam Chair, yes. I just was asking about the concern of the people that don't have the transportation to bring the children or get the children there for the, for the program. I mean, is there any other alternative? And I guess just that the normal summer feeding program operates only by school site. That was something that the district provided last year as we were out during the pandemic time as a, another avenue to provide those meals to those due to the mass mandate and some of the other things and some of the other health concerns. But now since we are starting to reopen and starting to reoperate, we're trying to start back to the normal operating procedures of the summer, of the summer feed program. And so as a support, the Cuban Town Prison, we were uh, busing. Yes, yes. So 
Oh, and, 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 I, and I guess just to just so I, just to that was a district cost that was not covered do, for, uh, by summer fee. Summer fee only covers the on-site meal cost. The district was taking on the cost of the transportation side for us, the drivers and the gas. Now that's something we can look at, but that will be on a limited basis due to the number of drivers that we will have that will be available. So we wouldn't be able to serve the entire school district as we have previously. We're continuing with the month of May, but the month of June was going to present a problem from the operational standpoint of get, getting those meals out to the community. I would think that there would be a number of grant, uh, grants for feeding uh, funding during this COVID season. I know that uh, there's some foundations that do that. I didn't know whether that would even make way for using uh, contracted bus or, or transportation. I don't know. I, I just am throwing that out. And, and that's something we can look look into. Uh, like I know from the summer feed side, it doesn't it doesn't take on the cost of the drivers. There's something that we from the district side have been taking on those expenses. Okay, thank you. I need to hold on for a second. Dr. Brown, it says uh, proposed budget, but the only thing I see is salaries for managers, assistant managers. So when they say other employees, is that all of these people, that's what they will make, or it says other? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. John, so on average, if you had, if there was transportation that they could go out to one of the rural areas, I'll say Minnesota City, so how many lunches do you think would be sent to Minnesota City? And, and I would definitely have to refer to Ms. Howard, but I want to say based on the number of students from the transportation report that Ms. Hudson provided, it would probably be around 40, somewhere around 40. Could there be an alternative to a uh, way of transporting out to those areas? Uh, for instance, the district on a van, something, um, maybe that could be used that does not require a bus license. Because I would hate also for them not to be able to take advantage. It's, it's now, now we are opening a summer school, and I guess it, to make to make make you aware that all summer school sites will be open, so students will have the opportunity to be at the school site receiving those meals. But to get to the school would be a problem for them. Yeah, if if they're not if they're not taking on the I guess if they're not participating in our summer learning program, which we are providing to all all schools this summer. So they would have the opportunity to be bused to school and receive meals if they, if they're if them and their parents desire. But we will look at the van route. Right? I will I will speak with Ms. Howard to see how is that possible. I know we talked about it previously and the issue was we couldn't drop off at one central site. That would be something we would have to do as similar to bus routes. We would have to park and allow the students to come. And not being on the school bus is a liability because we won't have to stop arms and things of that nature. So it's, it's, it's a challenge from the operational standpoint. I know that the Foundation for Northwest Mississippi has been very generous during this COVID time in providing grants for feeding programs of all types. And so that might be one avenue. Okay. okay. How are these salaries set? Those are set from Ms. Howard, from my understanding. It's a approval through the Mississippi Department of Edu uh, Education Food Service Department, and they approve uh, those amounts, and I think we submit those amounts to be approved. Yeah, we're going to, okay, Chair will obtain a motion to uh, approve the operation of the summer feeding program and the proposed budget. So we'll, is the motion is second out in favor? Any opposed? I have a motion to carry, Dr. Brown. Next, we have approval of inventory removal. Ms. Cole, the attached list of items are missing and require board approval before being removed from the district's inventory. 
Please note the location number of items in the brief report submitted in the attachment for one school. Ms. Tolman, if, um, in the board packet, we're not looking at the one in the board packet, the attachment that she submitted is what we're looking at. So we can take this out? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Yes, ma'am. She'll be in your packet for oh, the one school. Okay. Okay, that's fine. The superintendent recommends that the school board approve the attached inventory to remove the list. Chair, I want to sign a motion to approve the attached inventory to remove the list. So moved. Second. Is the motion second all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I have it. Motion is carried, Dr. Brown. School Improvement Grant Extended Year Program, Ms. Cole. The Mississippi Department of Education requires full implementation of the C grant to include extended learning opportunities for the summer of 2021. The district is in the fourth and final year of the C grants implementation. To satisfy grant requirements, the Greenwood of Florida Consolidated School District will offer extended year services to students uh, at Thread Year Elementary, Greenwood Middle, and Greenwood High for the month of June. Instruction will be provided face-to-face -face and funded by the Student Improvement Grant for those students. All other schools will be funded by extra funds and district funds. Please see the attached name where the staff members recommended to provide instruction for the extended year program. The superintendent recommends school board approval of the recommendations for the operation of the school improvement grant extended year program for the month of June 2021. Chair, I want to a motion to approve the recommendation for the operation of the School Improvement Grant Extended Year Program for the month of June 2021. So moved. Second. It's been motion and second. I'm in favor. Aye. Any opposed? I have it. Motion is carried. Dr. Brown. Approval of the 2021 Special Education Extended School Year Personnel, Ms. Coleman. To mitigate learning loss, the Special Education Department is offering extended school year services in alignment with state and federal laws to provide a free, appropriate public education to students with disabilities. ESY services include instructional and other related services that extend beyond the normal school year in accordance with students' IEPs at no cost to the parents. Services will primarily be provided face-to-face. -face. The superintendent recommends school board approval of the extended school year personnel who will provide instructional and related services to students with disabilities for the summer of 2021. Chair, I want a motion to approve the ESY personnel who will provide instructional and related services to students with disabilities for the summer of 2021. It's been motion and second. I'm in favor. Any opposed? I have this motion carried by the ground. The FY 2021 Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief 2 application approval, Dr. Pudding. Extra 2 funds will be used to address the challenges that the district continues to face due to COVID 19. Some, of, some examples of how the funds will be allocated include, but is not limited to, cleaning supplies, masks, technology equipment, after school and extended school, distance learning management platform, technology equipment, hot spot, Wi-Fi connectivity, upgrades to bathrooms and HVAC system. Other essential necessary to prevent, prepare, 
and respond to COVID-19. And it is in the amount of uh, 15.7 billion. And what was that deadline again? Uh, the original deadline uh, was um, Friday, but they uh, have extended it to provide additional training uh, for for uh, school districts who may not have attended. It, and it is now May 21st. The superintendent recommends that the school board approve the submission of the FY 2021 elementary and secondary school emergency relief to ESSER application to the Mississippi Department of Education. Chair, I want to obtain a motion to approve the submission of the FY 2021 ESSER 2 application to the Mississippi Department of Education. It's been motion and second. I'm afraid. Any opposed? I've had the motion is carried by the Brown. Page 138. Permission to remove school buses from inventory, Mr. Johnson. The Greenwood LaFleur Consolidated School District Transportation Department is requesting permission to use these buses as spare parts. The six buses listed below are beyond repair and need to be listed as such on the fixed asset report. And you have a listing of the fixed asset numbers and the buses, as well as the make and model and serial numbers. Any question, board members? It's page 138. The superintendent recommends that the school board grant permission to remove the buses listed above from inventory and use these buses as spare parts. Chair, I want to obtain a motion to grant permission to remove the buses listed above from inventory and use these buses as spare parts. The motion is second twice. All in favor? Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried by the Brown. Approval of local plan updates for the Career Technical Center, Dr. Pudding. The school district is seeking approval to submit the local plan updates for fiscal year 2022 and program change form assurances signature pages. This form is completed annually to verify compliance with several guidelines of the Quality Perkins Basic Grant. Funds are used to purchase software and equipment for CTC programs. So are we in compliance with this, this information that we have, Mr. Pudler? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This is uh, basically uh, stating that we're going to use the funds the way they should be. And uh, uh, pretty much uh, we, we had some conversations surrounding, uh, you know, what we can do in order to digitize uh, some of the uh, programs that we have over there and also to uh, do some enhancements that, uh, that are much needed. Yes, ma'am. How many programs will we have for um, next year? I want to say that number is eight, but I'll, I'll definitely verify.
Me and the manager, he's the each director. Um, as, as similar to, to similar to other grant, you know, other grants that we may have. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but it's and uh, I'm acknowledging and, and I have agreed to. So can I have more information after this meeting? Sure. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Brown. The superintendent recommends school board approval to submit the local plan updates for fiscal year 2021 in the Greenwood the floor consolidated school district's career and technical center. Chair, I want to obtain a motion to submit the local plan updates for fiscal year 2021 for GLC, I'm sorry, for Greenwood the floor career and tech center. It's been motion and second out in favor. I, I would like to abstain. I have it. Motion is carried. Dr. Brown. Page 150. Monthly financial reports, Mrs. Washington. Good afternoon, board. I'm, uh, let's see, the monthly financial report. Uh, in close, you have a attached, excuse me, cash balance report, fund balance report, a budget status report, cash flow statements. Um, the bank reconciliation reports are not in there, and it's simply because we're caught up all with the exception of of uh, of the payroll. So that one is not in there, and then you have the client document. The expenditures to date are within budget amounts. Cash balance on hand is sufficient to cover all immediate and current projected expenses. And you say we don't have payroll because? Well, she just sent it yesterday. So I didn't get it, and uh, I printed it out this morning, but I have to modify it uh, so that I can send it to you. Uh, I'm sorry, I was talking to Ms. Lewis. Could you say that one more time? The, uh, she's completed them. She, I, I got to download them this morning. She sent them yesterday, but I guess it was after I left. So I, I have them, uh, and I, I have to modify them so I can get them to the board. But she has caught up all the way up to um, to March, actually. Dr. Bannon. Question, Mr. President. Um, Ms. Uh, Washington, good evening. Um, in regards to just financial information, can you? Verify or give me some clarification as it pertains to the filing error, error uh, with the IRS. Has that been rectified? It has. I sent a 944 form when I spoke um, last week. On, actually, it was on Friday. And they told me that was the other issue, uh, the, the reason why people were getting the letters. So we thought initially it was because of the uh, incorrect format uh, of the well, file that we submitted. And they said that was not the problem. The problem was we had to put everything on uh, a 944 form. The school is eligible for a 941, and that's what we're supposed to submit. Uh, those documents were submitted, but however, uh, they still had us to go back and fill a 944 form uh, because it's what the IRS still had on file. Okay, so uh, those persons that may have been affected, they should be in good shape now, correct? They should be. I will call back from the phone tomorrow with the IRS and just sit there and wait until I get somebody on the line to ensure that they do have that document in their hand. Because like I said, I tell them fly. All right, thank you, Ms. Washington. Can you come back? Ms. Johnson, can she come back? So, Ms. Washington. I'm still here. Yeah, so I'm still here. once you make sure that everything is clear uh, according to what Dr. Bader said, could you please some kind of way let the board know that we are clear? And the same with payroll, can you let the board know that we are clear some kind of way? Uh, could you repeat that last part? With the IRS and with payroll, 
Can you give the board some type of receipt on tomorrow to let us know? When I say receipt, I'm just saying documentation that we are clear with payroll and that we are clear with the IRS. Yes, okay. Thank you. Uh, let the record show that Ms. Lewis uh, is refusing herself. Dr. Brown. The superintendent recommends that the school board approve the March financial reports and the payment claims 947975 through 948234 for the Greenwood of Florida Consolidated School District. Chair will obtain a motion to approve the March financial reports and the payment of claims 947. 9948 through 
Chair, I want to entertain a motion to uh, close this meeting for consideration of executive session. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried.